Hello, my name is Taylor. I'm going to show you guys how to reconcile your Monarch Money budgeting app. This is something you should be doing every at the at, at the end of every month, uh, at least. But ideally, you're doing this weekly, every other day, some something similar to this process, so that you can stay on top of your budget. It's a very active process, rather, and you can strategize through the month rather than going at the end of the month saying, "Oh, we didn't quite hit that spending goal. Let's try again next month." We should be actively looking at what is it that we can do differently next week and tomorrow so that we can hit your uh, your savings goals and your debt payoff goals and all of that. So we'll just dive in right away. But first, uh, again, my name is Taylor. I am a financial coach. I help my clients create cash flow systems and implement their budget uh, so that they can save more money, pay off debt, and maximize their lifestyle expenses with, according to their values uh, so they can achieve their financial goals. So let's dive into Monarch and see how you can reconcile your budget every month. All right, so step one is normally you have already created a budget. Uh, you have set a plan for what you want to be spending your money on. And again, this is something you should be doing regularly, like every few days, every week um, as this process. But if you're looking at this at the end of the month, you'll probably have zero dollars left to budget because you already created a plan. You already assigned every dollar that you were expecting this month, um, a job in the sense, uh, into all of these categories, right? Uh, so we assigned 8100 $100. Now, step one <laughs> is to make sure your income matches what you actually brought in. So in this case, you'll see that I brought in a little extra money right now. So uh, I planned for 81 and maybe I got a bonus this month or maybe it was just like work some extra hours or something and maybe it was a one-time thing. So I'm gonna change this to 8,400 to match this, but I don't want to apply it to all future months. So I'm gonna unclick this um, because normally my paycheck's 81, but this month I just got 84. So that's something that you need to be aware of is that button to unclick these things if you've set a budget once and you just want to manipulate your budget for the month because real life happened, uh, you have to click that button. I'm really hoping that this they update this so that the default is not applied all future months. I would really like that to not be the default. Um, and there, uh, you know, that is something that has been suggested to Monarch. So hopefully, hopefully crossing my fingers that happens because this is the most tedious part of reconciling your budget is this, this, uh, this button. So um, again, I, mean, I got some extra income maybe from a little side hustle I have or something, but I had extra income coming in. So I need to make sure that I actually put this in my budget. So the 250 of extra income and then maybe some interest. All right. And again, if you don't want this to be every single month, make sure you unclick this every single time. Otherwise it will show up now every single month is that $12 of interest and $250 of income. And maybe that's not every month. So. All right, so we have our income now matching. The budget now matches this. And because we did that, we have $562 left to assign. We need to give it a job. Uh, and so that is part of this process is we need to go fill the red bubbles with all of this green that we have. Uh, we can kind of make sure this is all going back to either gray or green. Now, the th key thing here and the reason why you need to do this um, is that we have rollover categories turned on. And again, if you have any questions about how I have these categories set up, it's kind of in line with the video I did on categories. So go check that out if you want something similar to this. Um, but we need to make sure uh, that these rollover categories for our sinking fund, and I did a video on that as well, um, your sinking fund categories are accurate because as soon as you turn on a rollover feature, you are not allowed to have red bubbles uh, in your budget. If you have a green rollover, there cannot be any red bubbles. That is just a rule that you have to follow in order to get the most accurate data. Why? Because if I let this roll over, as you can see, I did not actually save this money here. Um, I says I saved $1,300, but according to the, my actual expenses, I, you know, I budgeted 7,100, I spent 68. I only actually saved 312 if I did everything in this budget the way I, you know, have it planned not a 1300 and if i let this month go over to next month all these red bubbles would disappear because they're not or they don't have that little rollover feature turned on and it would still say i have you know this much money being rolled over and being available to use and it creates false savings so if you don't use a rollover feature, if you're not using these sinking fund things, and if you don't have any bubbles returned as a rollover, you're good. You can let this go. You can say, hey, you know, I did spend a little bit more. Maybe I should be planning and seeing if I can change my budget so that this isn't always red. If this is always happening, you really need to, you know, make sure you're updating your budget to be a little bit more realistic. But if you want to just like, hey, you know, I didn't spend a, or I spent a little more on groceries than I planned. Well, let's go again next month and see what happens. You don't, you can totally skip this next part if you do not have the rollover feature. But if you do have the rollover feature, you need 
to get rid of the red bubbles. So it's just a little game we're playing. We're going to get rid of the red bubbles. So first step is to review your uh, fixed expenses. This fixed expenses category, there's not a lot we really have to do here month to month because normally these are just fixed bills. So we just got to make sure, well, hey, you know, my electricity bill is a little bit more than usual. Maybe I just let that roll over and just let the, you know, the uh, less expensive months kind of cover that rollover. Or maybe I can get rid of it with the extra money I have budgeted here. If I wanted to do that, I would turn off that roll, uh, make sure apply to all future months, match it. And so that turns uh, gray. Uh, gas, I didn't actually end up spending as much on gas. So I can click on this red bubble or green bubble. Sorry. You can click on this and it will send it to another category that needs funds. So I went over on groceries. So I'm going to go ahead and use that gas, but money to go cover some of my uh, spending for groceries. Now subscriptions, notice I have $81 in subscriptions, but I'm budgeting for 50. What happened? This is a trigger for you to say, oh, well, maybe I need to review this. Well, in, in these are indeed all the subscriptions I have. So it looks like my budget is incorrect. So I need to go and adjust my budget. And I do want to adjust this for every single month. So I am going to change this to 81 and leave that checked. Um, and that way I know that my subscriptions are on par. So that way you can see new subscriptions. You can see if there's anything you forgot to cancel, see if um, everything is getting paid on time and it got paid during the month. Okay. So now the bills are done. That section's done. We're good. We can leave that alone now. Um, now we're going into the behavior side, the variable expenses, the day-to-day -day spending. This is all the stuff that was driven by choices. Um, so we need to go and review these to get rid of these red bubbles. Now, again, you can click on this to send or to either you can just click on a red bubble or a green bubble. If you click on the red bubble, it's going to find a green bubble to cover those expenses. Um, if you click on a green bubble, it'll send it to the next available uh, or the, one, the red, a red bubble that needs those funds. So we're going to just go ahead and keep doing that. We're going to find all the green bubbles and that's it. It looks like I overspent on all the other categories that I had, but I have some extra money to assign. Um, if I did not have extra money to assign, then the, let's pretend this is zero. What's going to happen is that you need to pull the funds from here. You didn't end up actually saving it. So you need to send this money over to cover groceries or and all this other stuff. It needs to, you have to use it to get rid of the red bubbles. Um, another thing to be doing is just making sure everything's accurate. If you see like, oh, I have some spending in coffee shops. Well, maybe I did. I do remember going to Starbucks, but if you notice, I have $100 in electronics, but I'm like, I don't have a budget for that. Why is that there? I'm going to click on it. I will click on this category and see all the transactions that happened in that uh, in that section for this month. And let's say I did go to Best Buy, but it's not electronics. It was uh, shopping, you know, it's just, or, you know, maybe it was a gift. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my budget and see how that kind of fares now. And same with all these. If you're like, whoa, what did I spend $300, $380 on? Let's click this and kind of see where it all went. Maybe I need to change these categories, adjust some things. So you just want to make sure the actual uh, numbers do make sense. Uh, so now that we have that, um, what we would do again, you got to use this funds or you can pull money away from your goals. So if you're like, oh, I need to use this now and to go to cover this over overspending, you can do that. You can reduce that. Now note that you can mess with your budget and get this all reconciled using this column, the budget column or the remaining column. They're doing the exact same thing. When you move funds from this $1,000 to travel vacation, maybe I just want to send like, um, 251 to cover groceries. If I want to do that, what it's going to do, if you'll notice, is send $251, so it's now 749 and that moved that money to this. So now that is a $0. You can do the same thing by maybe clicking um, on the 749 there, and you can just say, well, hey, maybe I only want to put $500 towards travel this month. It's going to take that money, put it up here so that you can go and assign it to everything else. Um, and so you can do that. And again, remember, you have to unclick this every single time. Um, it is one of the most tedious parts of this process. But we're going to go ahead and use all these funds and assign it here um, to fill out these categories. All right, we're just going to keep going there again, unclick. Um, and again, this is a lot less tedious if you do this regularly. If you're waiting till the end of the month to do this, it gets tedious. There's a lot of red bubbles, right? If you're doing this once a week, then there's maybe one or two bubbles you have to deal with and that's it. 
All right, well, it looks like I can actually put a little bit more towards the, uh, the travel budget, so we are good. And now these green bubbles are accurate because there are no red bubbles. Uh, you can ignore the rounding errors that happen. Um, because these green bubbles don't have any red bubbles to contradict it, we are set. We are good to go over and trust that this balance is actually there for us. Now, you'll also notice that we have some money saved for retirement. I want to budget and send money to retirement. Now, something to note is that you budgeted for it. You can go ahead and now send that money because you've reconciled your budget. You know you have the funds for it. You know the money came in and you can move it towards your retirement accounts. Now, most retirement accounts in Monarch are not feeding the uh, contributing transaction. They'll feed it. You'll obviously see the money leave your checking account, but you will not actually see the transaction for when it hits your Roth or 401k or anything like that. So you'll not probably never see this actually turn zero, but it's okay. You can still budget for it. You can still know it happened because you made sure the transaction occurred. It still makes sense with cash flow because in your cash flow, it's still going to say in your report or in your cash flow for January here, it's going to show you that you saved $1,800. And that is coming from the uh, sinking fund that you have, the $874 you saved for your sinking fund, the travel, the home improvement, all that stuff, and the $1,000 you're putting aside for retirement. If you send that money to retirement, it's still going to show that. It just won't show up in the actual spend. So just as a side note there, I'm going to do a whole video on that soon, but um, just something to be aware of. So now your budget's reconciled. You have zero left to budget, income matches, no red bubbles, and you can trust this. You are good to go. Your budget is reconciled, and you can trust that you are getting the accurate data from Monarch Money. So I hope that helps. Please subscribe to this channel and please leave comments when you have questions. I will continue to make videos for you as you come up with questions and they can be as helpful as possible for you. So thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe and like this video.